Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. So I'm currently busy working on my Game Jam game for the second Blackthorn Prod Game Jam, which challenges developers to make a game in one week along the theme of mini planets. If you're a game dev and have some free time, definitely consider joining the fun. However, I feel like the channel has been too quiet lately because of my holiday and later bad flu. So I decided to make a tutorial sharing the process I go through when creating and animating my 2D game characters. This is a topic I am very comfortable with, having used the techniques and tools shown in this video for all my games for the past two years. It's very basic, easy stuff, aimed at beginners wanting to bring their 2D characters and worlds to life. Notice that I'll be using Photoshop to draw and color my characters and Unity to rig and animate them, but you can use another 2D drawing application to replace Photoshop if you like, such as GIMP or Krita. So the first step I go through when creating my 2D characters is the sketching phase. This is the phase when I'm dreaming up the overall design and proportions. So I make a new file that is 5 inches long and 7 inches wide. When sketching, I sometimes gather some reference pictures to inspire or help me out when doing so. So if I'm planning on making a lizard warrior for example, I'll search up pictures of lizards and komodo dragons. At this point I'm staying very rough and loose. There's no need to worry about smooth, clean outlines or details. That will all come later. Try and come up with several sketches. Often your first ideas will be your worst ones, so flush them out of your system quickly to get to the more interesting, clever character designs. Alright, so I'm going to bring to life this simple and cute skeleton warrior character. Now, unlike in a few of my other animation tutorials on this channel, where I show you how to animate stuff directly inside of Photoshop using a frame-by-frame -frame animation technique, we'll be using a simple bone-based method in this video. But first of all, what's the difference? Well, frame-by-frame -frame animation is the act of drawing by hand every single frame that makes up the animation. So, for example, if you wanted to animate a character swinging a sword, then you would draw him looking like this, then this, and then this, and so on. And then once those drawings play in a sequence, it gives the illusion of movement. And this can create some very smooth, appealing animations. Plus, you have the freedom to deform your characters in any way you like, without the constraint of a skeleton rig. Which brings us to the second method, which is the bone-based one. In other words, we just need to draw the character once and set up a virtual skeleton we will use to move all of his different body parts. Neither method is better than the other, they're just different and by trying a bit of both, you'll find out which speaks best to you. Frame by frame is more difficult and time consuming in my opinion, and bone based can result in more robotic looking animations and also give you a slightly harder time designing characters. But of course, both can lead to absolutely stunning characters and animations. All that's needed is practice and patience. Anyway, with the sketch complete, I'm going to move on to the inking phase. This is when I clean up the rough outline of my character with the smooth, clean lines. But since we also want to animate this character, I'll need to make sure to draw each body part I wish to move independently on a separate layer, so I can then assemble him back in Unity and move, rotate and scale each body part independently of the rest. In this case, the character is made up of a head, shield, body, a sword arm and two legs. So I'll make a layer for each of those parts, drawing the corresponding body part on that layer with a thick hard round brush. Obviously, the larger and more complex your character, the more challenging it will be to animate it. So try and make your character simple, especially when starting out, with only a few moving parts. So I'll make sure to color my character, again making a new layer for each body part. So for example, I have a head layer here with the skeleton's head outline. So I'll make a new layer under the head layer, use it to color the head, and then shift select both layers and merge them. And of course, repeat that with all the other body parts. And quick tip, stuff drawn on top layers will render in front of stuff drawn on lower layers. So for example, if the shield was behind the body, just left click on the shield layer and drag it on top of the body layer so that it renders in front of it. Okay, so the character has been drawn and colored, and is now ready to be imported inside of Unity to be rigged and animated. So I'll make a new Photoshop file to do so. 
I'll start by selecting the head layer and hit Ctrl C to copy the contents of that layer. And now I can head to this new file and paste that head in there with Ctrl V. And I'll repeat that process for the other body parts. Chances are high all the sprites are stacked on top of each other, so make sure to separate stuff nicely using Ctrl T. Once that's done, you should have a sprite sheet that looks something like this. I'll hit C on my keyboard to crop the file. In other words, get rid of all that useless empty white space. And lastly, I'll disable the background layer so that it's transparent. And now I can head up to File, Save Has, and save this Photoshop file inside of my Unity project. Once that's done, you can hop inside of Unity, and indeed, the character sprite sheet should be right here. Awesome, we're making great progress here. Anyway, I'll now select this sprite sheet and take a look at the import settings over here. You won't be using most of these. This sprite mode setting, however, is important. Currently, it's set to single, and as you can see, dragging and dropping this sprite sheet pops into the scene, all the character's body parts looking like this. And we don't want that. We want each body part to be a separate sprite, which is why I'll set this sprite mode to multiple. Now I'll hit apply to save those changes and enter the sprite editor. Here I can slice these sprites into independent pieces. To do so I'll head up here to slice and choose automatic, and then hit slice again. By left clicking on the various body parts, you'll notice how rectangular boxes have been drawn over them. All I now need to do is hit apply up here, close the sprite editor and ta-da! My sprite sheet is now made up of multiple objects I can left click on and drag into the scene. You can if you want assemble your character here, helping yourself with the Photoshop file if need be. Also remember to tweak the order and layer inside the sprite render components, to make some body parts render in front of others, so a higher order and layer will get things rendering in front, and a lower order and layer will get them rendering behind. Now I'll select the head and try rotating it, but it doesn't really behave the way I would like it to. Instead of rotating around the neck area, it rotates around its center, which doesn't look right. Same for this sword arm. I would like it to rotate around the shoulder, not its center. Well, to fix this, we need to head back to the sprite editor and change the various body parts pivot points, which are these small blue gizmos we can hold the left mouse button over and drag around. So I'll move the head one down here so that it rotates, moves and scales the head from that more neck-like area. For the legs, I'll move the pivot points up here. I'll move the arm one near the shoulder. I'll leave the shield one at the center. And finally, move the body one by the hips. Oh, and don't worry, with practice, trial and error, placing pivot points will become second nature to you. Once you're done, hit apply and close the sprite editor. Now your character will need to be reassembled a bit again, but once that's done, everything should be moving in a more believable way. Super. Before moving on now, make sure to rename your character's various body parts, to keep things clean and organized. This might seem like an extra annoying step, but as you'll see during the animation process, this will save you a lot of time in the long run. Okay, it's now time to do some parenting. In other words, building a mini hierarchy of our character so that certain body parts affect others. For example, I would like to have the head and arms rotate, move and scale when I rotate, move and scale the body. I would also like to have a root skeleton character object I can use to move, rotate and scale the entire character all at once. So I'll make a new empty game object called character and place it roughly at the center of my character. Now I'll shift select all the body parts and drag them inside of this character empty game object. This way when I select that game object and move it around, all the body parts inside it also move. And now I'll select the head, shield and weapon and parent those to the body. This way manipulating the body will also manipulate the head and arms. So as you can see, by simply parenting objects to other objects, we've created a solid little rig, and we're now ready to animate the character. So I'll head over to Window, Animation, and Animation again. This will open up the animation timeline. I'll select the root on my character, and now click on this Create New Animation button. Unity will prompt me to save my animation somewhere in my project. It's a good idea to make a folder called Animations, and then within that folder, make a folder specific to a certain character. 
in this case, skeleton. And now I'll save all the animations related to that skeleton in there. I'll call this first animation test. And now I'll have access to the timeline. This is the play button. You can click on this to view your animation. But obviously there's a none for now. So I'll hit this red record button. From now on, anything of the character that we move, rotate or scale will be considered part of the animation. So if I left click on the timeline, for example, and move this white line to about 30 milliseconds, and then select the body and rotate it, little diamond shapes will appear. And hitting the play button will show off our new animation. This one featuring the skeleton rotating his body and snapping back into place. These little diamond shapes are keyframes, by the way, and they store information about where a certain object was and at what time. For example, this keyframe stores the body with no rotation at zero seconds in the animation. And this keyframe has the body with some rotation value at 30 milliseconds. And so from here to here, the body moves to go from that keyframe to this one. If you get confused as to what keyframes are related to what, just take a look here where there's a detailed description of exactly that. Let's say I grabbed the head now and rotated it at 10 milliseconds. Well, hop, more keyframes appear. So as soon as you've finished animating, just make sure to left click again on the record button so that you don't accidentally animate anything you don't want to. You can of course also move keyframes around the timeline. Just do so by left clicking on them and dragging. So for example, say I wanted to speed up the rotation of the body. Well, instead of having that last 30 milliseconds, I'll make it last only 15. To select multiple keyframes at once, you simply need to left click and drag a marquee over the chunk of the animation that you want to select. You can also click the topmost keyframe to select every keyframe on that column. Oh, and before I forget, to zoom in and out of the timeline, just use the middle mouse button. So that's the basics of animation in Unity. Simply select pieces of your character and move, rotate and scale them along the timeline. Note that you might encounter an annoying Unity bug while animating where the objects you try to move snaps weirdly and red console errors pop up. If that's the case, just make sure to add properties before moving, rotating or scaling your objects. In other words, if you want to move your head in the animation, click on this add properties button, click on body, there you'll find a head just like our hierarchy setup, and then click transform and finally position. This will automatically set keys related to the head position at the start and end of your animation. And now you'll be able to animate the head without any bugs bothering you. It's a bit time consuming and annoying, but it is the only workaround I've found for now. Alright, just before finishing this tutorial, let's create a simple idle animation for this skeleton. This is the animation the character will play when standing still. So first of all, I'll select all these keyframes and delete them by pressing the delete key on my keyboard. Now I'll start by adding a position keyframe for the body on the timeline. And I'll select the last keyframe related to that and move it to about 30 milliseconds. One whole second for an idle animation loop is a bit too long, I think. Then at 15 milliseconds, I'll move the body up slightly. And now if I press play, you'll see that the character appears to be breathing, his chest rising and falling. I'll now add a position keyframe for the head and move it down at around seven milliseconds. And then move it up more at 23 milliseconds. To create some overlapping action and make the whole animation feel more smooth and interesting. And finally, I'll rotate the shield and sword a bit halfway through the animation. And always make sure that the first and last keyframes are the same in this sort of animation. This way it loops smoothly. To do so, just select all the first keyframes, hit Ctrl C to copy them, and then paste those at the end with Ctrl V. It's as easy as that. And there we go, we have a simple little idle animation. You can of course add more to it, or even change the overall speed of the animation if you like. For example, if I wanted it to be faster, I could select all the keyframes, and then left click on this blue bar to squash the keys together. This will speed it up. Or I can pull all the keys apart to slow things down. With that said, I'll wrap up the video here. Now, we've just skimmed the surface of game animation here. All I've taught you is how to assemble a character and a few basic animation tools. In the next video, in this 2D game animation basic series, we'll create a cool idle run and jump animation for a player character. There, we'll put into practice the basics we quickly covered in this video, as well as learn a couple more cool tips and tricks. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. An extra thank you to these awesome people who support me and my channel financially via Patreon. 
And of course, best of luck to all those taking part in the second Blackthorn Prod Game Jam. I'm just so excited to see what you all come up with. Alright, have a great day. Cheers. Cheers.